And in this video, we are moving on to compound interest. And it is when you basically earn or pay interest on your interest. This is normally how investments go. You do have to be careful because sometimes they don't do that. But surely when you earn some interest, you'd also like to earn more interest on that, right? And the other thing that I really want you to know about is this is how credit cards work. Okay, if you don't pay off your credit card uh, and you owe interest on it, they then charge you interest on that interest as well. Compound interest is going to grow exponentially. Now you've come across exponents before and you probably know that exponents can make things a lot bigger than what they started out being. And I just want you to see what's happening. In this formula, the N is the exponent, so really time is money. This is the time, and you're going to raise all of this money to the power of how much time you invested for. I'd like to show you with a very simple example what compound interest does in this formula. So let's take a small amount. Okay, let's take, let's take 100 rand. Let's put it into the simple interest formula, and let's do numbers that we can estimate in our heads. Let's say 10%. Okay, and let's say for one year. And we'll get our answer. So you already know that it's going to be 10% more, so it's going to be 10 Rand more, so we're going to get 110. Okay, now I want to put that 110 Rand into the simple interest formula instead of the 100 Rand, because with simple interest, all you would be doing is you would be adding on the 10 Rand every single year. Okay, so once you've gone 10 years, you will then owe 200 Rand with simple interest. In fact, I'll prove it here. So let's do this, 10%, let's go for 10 years, punch that into your calculator, and you'll see it gets to 200 Rand. Okay, so that's 10 years on simple interest, 10% per year, it kind of makes sense. Right, but let me take my 110 Rand, because that's what this is gonna give me, and let me put that 110 Rand back into simple interest. So what I'm saying is, after a year's worth of interest, I now wanna earn interest on the 100 Rand and the 10 Rand of interest, okay? If you punch that into your calculator, you get 121 Rand. Okay, let's punch that into the calculator. And each time you see I'm doing it for one year, right? And I get to 133 Rand 10 and so on. You can see that it's going to grow quite quickly. If I keep on doing that 10 times, it's like putting the 10 into the N. And I'll show you if we do this with the three years because my 133 comes from one, two, three years worth of interest. So let's put that in. Let's put in 100 Rand into the compound interest formula. One plus my interest rate, which we said was 10%, and I'm going to do to the power of three. Type that in, and there's your 133 Rand 10 again. So you can see that as we accumulate it, it's going to grow a lot faster. So my next question is, I wonder how long it would take to get to the 200. Well, let me put in this amount. Take our 100 Rand and let's put it in for 10%. And let's do it for eight years at compound interest rate. Gets me to 214 Rand, comma, three, six. And that's quite a low interest rate and it's quite a low amount of money. You can imagine what would happen if you put a million Rand in at, say, a 15% compound interest rate, but you can see that it's hitting the 200 mark way before 10 years. It's hitting it at eight years. In fact, it's even getting beyond 200 rand in eight years. So these are the concepts behind compound interest. All you have to do is be able to use this formula and of course memorize the formula. The A, the P, the I, and the N are all the same as we did with simple interest. It's just that the numbers are going to be a lot bigger and they're going to grow a lot faster. Let's look at an example. Kyla plans to invest 24,000 Rand for 18 years at 5.5% per annum compound interest. So that means you've got to use the new formula. Okay. Calculate the amount accumulated, so the A value, after the 18 years. 
let's put down all of our different amounts. Okay, my A is the amount I'm going to calculate, so it gets a question mark. P is 24,000. I is the 5.5% and N is 18. Let's put it into our new formula. A equals P, which is the 24,000, 1 plus my 5.5%, all to the power of 18. And remember, you can write the formula out first, but you don't have to. You can also just substitute straight away. Right, plug that in and you'll get an answer of 62,915 rand 19 cents. If this was a simple interest calculation, it would be a bit smaller than that. Right, next example, Diego invests 18,000 rand for six years at 15% compounded annually. Find the future value, that's a fancy way of saying the A value, of the investment after six years and the interest he receives. They actually want the I amount, not the interest rate. Please make sure you understand that if they ask for interest and they don't say the word rate, they actually want an amount of money. Okay, so A is my question mark again. P is the amount invested, the 18,000. I is the 15% and N is the six years. Okay, so A equals P 1 plus I all to the power of N. So A is my 18,000, 1 plus the 15% to the power of 6, and that gets me to 41,635 rand and 9 cents. Okay, now we want the interest amount. So interest is going to be equal to the amount I finished off with minus the amount I started off with. So that's going to be my 41,635 rand 9 minus the 18,000 I started with. And that answer is 23,635 and 9 cents. Tiana has just opened a small coffee shop and takes out a loan to provide the initial capital to start the business. Okay, but we're not told how much she borrows, right? She agrees to pay the loan four years, okay, so we've got the N value, by means of a payment of 800,000 Rand. What that means is that 800,000 Rand is what she pays back, and the amount she pays back will be the amount that she borrowed plus the interest, so that means this has to be the A value, right? And that's the N. Okay. The bank charges her an interest rate of that, which will be our I value. And they want to know what was the amount of money she borrowed initially. So that will be your P value. So we are finding P. Okay. The information is in the paragraph. It just takes a bit of reading and highlighting and annotating to make sure you are extracting the right number. To the right place in the formula. So my A is the 800,000. My P is the thing I don't know. The I is 18% and the N is 4. Let's put those into the compound interest formula. So A, which is my 800,000, equals P, which I don't know, 1 plus 18% to the power of 4. And we're going to use exactly the same thing that we used for simple interest. Okay, so I'm going to figure out what all of this bracket is going to be and I'm going to multiply it out and I'm going to put it by P and then I'm going to do some division. Okay, so pick up your calculator. We're going to type in that bracket. So we're going to type in open bracket 1 plus 18% close bracket and raised to the power of 4, you're going to get quite a long decimal. And I want you to write down every single decimal point. Do not round off here, please. Let's write that down. Do not round off yet. Okay, it will be completely wrong. It's not just a rounding off error, like the whole thing is wrong, because this decimal is 
innately part of the question. Okay, now I need to get what P is by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by my long decimal, and I'm going to use the answer function in my calculator. So I'm going to take 800,000 and type that in, and I'm going to divide by, and then I'm going to press answer button. Okay, and when I do that, I get 4, 1, 2, 6, 3, 1, comma, 1, and then 0, 0, 1, so it's going to be 0. 0.10 because we're dealing with money. So that is the amount she originally borrowed. Our last example for compound interest will be when we're calculating I. And again, very similar approach to when we were doing it in simple interest. Okay, that amount is invested for six years and grows to that amount. Find the interest rate if interest is compounded annually, and the word compounded tells us to use the compound interest formula. Okay, let's put everything in perspective so that we sub in correctly. The unknown is the interest rate. The A is going to be the bigger amount. And the P is the invested amount, the smaller amount. And we know that N is 6. Right, let's plug it in. 12,500 equals 6,800. And now we're going to have 1 plus an unknown. Right, to the power of 6. So we actually can't work out this bracket this time. It's going to take a little bit more thinking to solve this equation. But don't worry, you'll be able to do it. Okay, so you're going to take 12,500 and we're going to divide it by the 6,800 first. Okay, I'm going to show you the steps on my little virtual calculator here because I think you need to see how we're going to handle that 6. So you're going to be typing in your 12,500, okay, and then we're going to divide by the 6,800, okay? Get an answer there and write it down. Right, so we've divided the two numbers and now we have the 125 over 68 equals the 1 plus i to the power of 6. Okay, so I want to just remind you then that to reverse a power of 6, you need to take a sixth's root of whatever that is. So we're basically going to take the sixth's root. We're going to undo the power of six on both sides. And this is how we're going to do it on the calculator. Okay, I'm going to clear what's on my screen. I'm going to go to my shift function and get the one where you can choose any root. And I'm going to put in the sixth's root. But inside there, when I go to my inside the third sign, I'm now going to press the answer button. Or you really can go and type in the 125 over 68 as well. Okay, that's fine. And then, of course, I'm going to get a, a, a number with a whole lot of decimals. And I'm also not going to round off until I get to the very, very end. Okay, so let's write that down. We then have 1, 1, 0, 6, 7, 9, 4, 1, 3, 7. And that equals 1 plus i. I think the rest is going to be easy. You can see that what we need to do is we need to subtract one from each side. I just do that in my head, to be honest, because taking off one from here makes it I, and taking off one from this side makes it, instead of one comma long decimal, it's going to be zero comma long decimal. And then the last step is exactly what you've done before. All I need to do is to convert to an interest rate by multiplying by 100. Okay, so it's going to be 10 comma, six, seven, nine, etc. Which means it's going to be 10, comma, six, eight percent.